Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification cast this side of East Yorkshire. And today over 1 versus 1 on Emerald River. Over in the Salamanders corner we have Rex. And over in the Eldar corner we have Kaiku. Kaiku will be opening up with double guardians, a fleet of foot and an aspect portal. Whereas the Salamanders are going to go for a tech marine, double scouts, furnace and a plasma generator. So a big dominant feature of this map is this monster energy-esque river in the middle be quite a difficult thing for the salamanders to fight through if they uh, manage to get themselves stuck in an engagement on this thing. Eldar with the fleet of foot can bob and weave between the cover and whatnot, so it's less of an issue for them. I imagine that the Eldar player will probably be going for some sort of uh, Dark Reaper composition as the salamanders are known for their tactical marines and whatnot. Scouts not capturing their nearest and dearest. They're going to go straight for what point they're going to go for. They're going to go for this central point over here. And to be honest, next to the Relic as well, I'd say that's a very good uh, place to initially get yourself set up. Uh, Tech Marine is also going to be moving along, going to join in. Tech Marines, nothing to be uh, sniffed at in close combat or range combat, to be honest. They are quite mean builds. In fact, these builders are considered commanders. So uh, fairly confident being able to bring that builder out so far into the middle of the map. But worry of these Guardians. Tactical Squad being popped. Force Commander also on his way out. While the game is getting underway, I will mention that um, I've got a kind of a, a semi-announcement that I'll make more clear on uh, Sunday. But there's going to be a Ultimate Apocalypse tournament. Well, when I say tournament, it's going to be a series. Uh, or what would you call it? A group series? Well, whatever you call it. It's, 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 a, it's a bunch of... Not this Sunday, but following three Sundays, there'll be a whole bunch of... All my apocalypse streams on this channel over here, so please do keep an eye on that. But like I said, I'll, I'll put more details on it in a post on Sunday because now I can do a community post because that's how we roll on this channel. Anyway, some scouts are going to move over along with their tactical marine allies to push these guardians off this strategic point, going to decap them in good measure. Guardians will not want to stay around, they are going to fleet a foot out of there, going to decide to try and capture this strategic point instead. Although tactical marines will follow them. Over here we have a bit of an engagement. Scouts being engaged in close combat by the Guardians. Guardians doing some flippy ninja nonsense. Giving them the old right boot in the face. And their numbers... Who managed to take down one scout. Force commander is on his way out. We'll see if they can save that scout. But it does look like, unfortunately, that scout will be taken to Brown Town. Dark Reaper squad now out on the field will lay waste into the side of these tactical marines. Scouts that are going to engage them in close combat, which will deny them their ranged attacks. Guardians being bullied off this post by the tactical marines. And these these burn singers are just they're, they're, they're just kind of chilling. Getting a bolt around to the face or two. Not teleporting out the way, though. They are saving their teleports, I imagine. For something else. Dark Reaper's trying to stutter step on these scouts. Managing to actually take a buff down. Very, very good bit of micro there. Will now turn their attention to these tactical marines. And very quickly dropping down one model. Won't be able to drop another though before they get into close combat. Although these guys don't fare too badly in close combat. Con considering the uh, damage output that they have. But tactical marines will be able to take them on. Again more stutter stepping or whatever you would call this going on so i imagine that tactical marines will probably want to go home at some point this is too much in the way of eldar nonsense to to manage and deal with Tech marine over here as well also maybe a little bit too brave too brash the space marines managed to what would you call it managed to deny this strategic point build even start building a listing post on it but they lost some scouts they lost some other bits and bobs, so I, I reckon that they've probably gone a bit too far. Well, mind you, Force Commander now coming in. Go to avenge his fallen Breadwin. Going to force these Guardians out. And to be honest, with one Force Commander, one Tactical Marine squad, and another around the back, if they could just keep both of these squads moving, maybe even have they got any armories on the go. No armories on the go at the moment, but if they had one squad with heavy bolters, keep these two squads on the go, they would be able to out uh, DPS the Rangers when they're in the middle of moving back and forth out of range, out of, not ranged, out of melee combat. Force Commander, not going to shy away from a fight. 
will get involved in close combat, giving this dude a whole, whole backflip, not quite landing on his feet. That must hurt his knees. On the ripe old age of Fetzi, I don't feel like as if I could survive quite a somersault in the air. That's Tactical Marines turning around. Spoilt for choice, really, over here. Many Eldari to snap in half. One Dark Reaper goes down. What's going on in the base for the Eldar? Now we're going to go for a Farseer. Uh, listening Shrine over here has been upgraded to Tier 2. One Listening Shrine over here. 68 and 10 compared to 68 and 20, which is actually quite incredible considering that the Space Marines have had access to this side of the map, this whole game, whereas the Eldar have been really settled down on these two points here. So the fact that there's no... Oh, I suppose... Oh, no, there's, there's a little... There's a little blue money advantage. But not as much as I was I was expecting, to be honest, at this stage of the game. But I suppose that the Space Marines have been spending a lot of blue money keeping their guys reinforced, which, again, like I say, maybe they've overstayed their welcome here. Farsia yeah, now out, and it's one of my favourite models in all of Dawn of War is the Eldar Farsia from uh, Dawn of War 2. During the Dawn of War 2 days, I, I played primarily um, Eldar, and it was very much Farsia and uh, Warp Spider. It was good times all around in the simple times of university. Um, yeah, the, the Space Marines have been pushed back. Morale has been broken. With two Guardian squads, Farsia and Dark Reaper squad. A little bit too much in the way of DPS for the Space Marines to probably deal with at the moment. They are going to stick with it, though. Trying to defend their listening post. Going to reinforce their numbers. The Space Marines aren't the cheapest to reinforce 50 blue money a piece. I mean, what, four reinforcements is a whole new Space Marine squad or two brand new listening posts. With the green money that they're on at the moment, uh, yeah, they'll be able to not reinforce four times and upgrade two listening posts. Although, mind you, they are going for some upgrade. I mean, they've got one upgrade. What else are they going to go for? They're going to go for burn the alien tier two. They'll certainly be trying to burn some aliens. They will need to get an army for that. Space Marines not getting into close combat. <laughs> this, this is quite the... Quite the uh, <laughs> Like that, that is uh, quite the um, ranged battle, I suppose. Uh, two Dark Reapers now out on the field. <laughs> that was brilliant. I quite like that. that. That is as point blank as you'll ever see in a in a fight, I, I do believe. But yeah, the, these Space Marines are going to have a bad time. These Space Marines are on the way out. Tech Marine going for a flanking manoeuvre. Scouts capturing this relic there. Might benefit them if they built some uh, bolt turrets, but then again... Uh, I do believe that in vanilla, Dark Reapers can outrange Bolt turrets, and I I will assume that in Unification that is the that is the same kind of dealio. One lonely tactical marine running all the way home now. These tactical marines, three moles of very very low health. Yep, yeah, space marines have thoroughly been beaten in the middle of this map here. Do have some scouts as well trying to go in for some flanking maneuvers. Again, very brave. We do like the tenacity of the Space Marines. We do have Burn the Alien now. Oh, and I quite like that little little um, Howling Banshee being set on fire picture down there beyond that. 98 and 10 compared to 74 and 20. So blue money advantage to Space Marines. Green money advantage to the Eldar. Tactical Marines, not quite. Yeah, they can't get their flames or metal guns just yet. Listening post, firing with fire. Barcia being a pain in the backside. Although even the Farsia won't be able to contend with even the uh, depleted numbers of the Space Marines. The Force Commander go down. Yeah, the Force Commander has gone down, which is another big loss for the Space Marines. Not sure where he died. No doubt he died with Honor and Valor. Space Marines, with the assistance of the Listening Post, will be able to push these guys back, but like I said, they are able to outrange the listening post. They'll be able to sit quite comfortably round the back. Barcia throwing some big Eldar boomer bits, managing to take down a couple of lads. That's going to range only two boys left in. We'll have to get involved in close combat. We'll tie these guys up. Other Dark Reaper squad is going to get tied up as well. Eldar going round on this side. Barcia, oh not Barcia, sorry, Warlock over yonder, firing with a wonderful uh Little little bolty action. Uh, anvil being built up. So I suppose that the Space Marines then are 
going to be, I assume, building up for some vehicle-based play, maybe some land speeders. Oh, look at that. The one time the caster curse doesn't 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 take place. It's like as if I can sometimes predict the future. Yeah, because these Dark Reapers, while very good against heavy infantry and infantry, they, they have a lackluster damage output towards vehicles, and land speeders are probably the ticket for the Salamanders to get back into the game. Although maybe they need to invest in more than just one plasma generator. Space Marines trying to capture this relic, which is it may, questionable timing. There's a Farseer slapping them in the backside. There are two Dark Reapers here to cut off their path of retreat. But we do have a land speeder coming in now. This might be the chance for the Dark Reapers to say, oh, hang on, we don't like this. Let's go back home. And these Dark Reapers, instantly having the morale broken, are going to do just that. Task Marines over here, though, they have been having a the, have been having a squad wipe. They have been wiped out, and so that that's that's not great. That is that is less than brilliant from the perspective of the Space Marines. Got some Shadow Spectres there, which will be ideal for sniping out any land speeders. I quite like this. He, he, uh, the Eldar player got some Shadow Spectres way before they even knew that there was going to be a land speed or any vehicle play. They added some anti-vehicle stuff into their unit composition in anticipation for what the Space Marine player would build. I mean, if you go Dark Reapers, then built, then um, vehicles are quite a common thing for people to build into. So it's planned. The Eldar looked into their runes, foresaw the future, and then decided to invest. I do believe that the Shadow Spectres will have a ability that can temporarily turn their anti-vehicle weaponry into anti-infantry weaponry as well, so one of, the, one of the rare Eldar units that can... Uh, what's the word? Because most Eldar units are hard counters to very specific things, so Shadow Spectres, I think, have a little bit of flexibility to their damage output, which is, like I say, very rare for an Eldar. Do I have some Thunder Fire Cannons? Which... Oh, they've now got the Forge as well. So potential for some, what would we call it, some, some advanced weaponry. But to be fair, the Eldar have captured most of the map so far. And with the current blue money income, they're going to have to break out with what they've, what they've got coming out. They've got a tactical squad. They've got a vehicle cap increase. But dear, oh dear, that is, yeah, one, one two, three volleys from the Shadow Specs is all that's needed to wipe out these Thunder Cannons. Land speeder going to take the brunt of some damage. So have a Razorback coming in there. But again, without infantry support, it won't survive for very long. You need some close combat units, like some assault marines, to jump in and slap these guys about. I mean, yeah, if, if they had, if they had, they've got some heavy bolters, they've got some land speeders, they've got a Razorback. Add some assault marines into the mix, and I reckon that'd be a composition that would be able to push out of the base, although maybe it is a little bit too little too late. 56 and 10, that's not the economy you want in uh, in 13 minutes into the game, really. Razorback, though, is going to get in as close as humanly possible to these Shadow sp Spectres. We'll take out one of their number. That's Club Marines, though, have been wiped out by the looks of things. Quite quick, sharpish. That Marine not able to keep that Razorback online. Land Speeder also falling. Thunder Cannon on the way out as well. And it looks to be like a very short game. So, yeah. I mean, more tactical marines are coming out, but I would probably say that this is the end of the game. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. Nice one. Anyway, uh, my name is Minus Lanchak. Pleasure as always. Never chop. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.